cursed guns in history. Since the beginning of civilization, humans have been inventing tools and weapons, from a flint axe and spearheads in the Stone Age to nuclear weapons in modern times, mankind has continually tried to improve and build new weapons that would give them an advantage over their enemies on the battlefield. The introduction of firearms marked the beginning of the most exciting chapter in the history of weapons. During this period, there were a lot of guns that were to be iconic of their era. But on the other hand, there were more than enough guns that carried the title of the worst contraptions in history. This is the story of five of the top worst guns. Colt Model 1855 Revolving Carbine The Colt Model 1855 Revolving Carbine was truly an example of how a brilliant design could go horribly wrong. In the mid-19th century, the American Colt Company established itself as a leader in manufacturing revolvers, its handguns being the finest available. Following the success of these, the Colt engineers tried to adapt the revolving chamber into a rifle design. The project's purpose was to increase the firepower of the U.S. cavalry units of the time, which still used single-shot rifles. The result was a percussion cap revolving carbine, the Model 1855 a revolver-looking carbine that had its round barrel fitted to a metal frame, while the cylinder was set within a closed frame design. It was manufactured in four different barrel lengths, 15, 18, 21, and 24 inches, and three different calibers, 36, 44, and 56. Depending on what type, the cylinders were made to hold five or six rounds. Although the Colt engineers believed their design to be a success, it proved to be a complete failure for one reason alone. Firing the percussion cap ammunition generated a lot of hot gases, which, because of the cylinder's design, often found their way into the remaining chambered rounds. This led to cooking off, effectively setting off the live rounds that would fire straight out of the cylinder itself and hit any part of the gun's mechanism that was in front of them. Even though the U.S. Army adopted the Model 1855, it had a short service life. The rifle was not popular among soldiers because of the numerous cook-off incidents where the soldiers had their forearms and faces burnt and injured. They would avoid firing the gun with their left hand, holding the forend to take an aim shot in case it got burnt or worse. Only around 4,400 copies were made, making this weapon one of the worst Colt designs ever. Mars Pistol At the turn of the 20th century, revolvers began to make way for a new type of firearm, the pistol. The early period of this era was marked by some iconic designs, such as the Colt 1911, but also by some rather unsatisfactory attempts. One such was the Mars Pistol manufactured by the renowned British Webley Company. Mars was actually not a Webley product, but a design of Mr. Hugh Gabbett Fairfax, who made a deal with the Webley company to only manufacture this pistol for them. Gabbett Fairfax's idea to make a self-loading pistol resulted in a heavy and complex construction that resembled a small cannon. Everything about the Mars pistol was unorthodox. The top of the magazine had a steel finger that covered the topmost cartridge, meaning the only way to remove the cartridge from the magazine was by pulling it backwards and up into the breech block. The total capacity of the magazine was only six rounds, no more than a standard revolver. The breech block comprised an overcomplicated rotating mechanism and an external hammer. Upon firing, it recoiled along with the barrel and was held at the back of the frame. Once the barrel returned, the extractor would eject the empty case upwards, often straight into the shooter's face. The pistol was made in three different calibers, 8.5 mm, 9 mm, and 45. The 45 version was, at the time, the most powerful pistol in the world. That, however, turned out to be yet another problem, because the pistol jumped wildly at each shot, making it very unpleasant to use. A record from one trial noted that, quote, nobody who fired this pistol wished to fire it a second time. That was why both the War Office and the Royal Navy refused to accept it for service. Ultimately, no more than 70 Mars pistols were made before its designer went bankrupt. Glissenti Model 1910 
even though unwieldy, the Mars pistol was designed to withstand the power of the 45 cartridge, unlike the Italian pistol Glicenti Model 1910, which was too feeble to deal with the 9mm round it was designed for. The Model 1910 was made to meet the requirements of the Italian Army to replace the obsolete Bodeo service revolver. The new pistol was the improved version of the Model 1906, which was chambered for the weaker 7.65mm cartridge. The problem was the Glicenti's construction was not sturdy enough to withstand the power of the standard 9mm by 19mm Parabellum cartridge. Firing such a powerful round caused the pistol's receiver to explode. The Italians did find a solution by introducing a special cartridge for the pistol, the 9mm by 19mm Glicenti. The cartridge was of the same dimensions as the 9mm Parabellum, but with a weaker propellant charge and significantly reduced stopping power. Compared to other 9mm pistols, the Glicenti was too weak. The Model 1910 was known for another unusual feature. On its left side, it had a plate that could be removed to clean the mechanism. It was a rather convenient feature, but one that largely contributed to the overall weakness of the pistol's frame, and also the plate often opened on its own during firing. The Glicenti Model 1910 was accepted for service in the Italian Army, despite all its drawbacks. However, with the low stopping power and a magazine only containing seven rounds, it had no real advantage over the Bodeo revolvers. Indeed, many Italian officers decided not to replace their old sidearms with the Glicenti. Although the pistol remained in service throughout World War II, it was only as a second-grade weapon. Gyrojet – Rocket-Propelled Pistol The history of guns has seen some quite peculiar examples due to the constant tendency to try to improve existing and creating new gun concepts. That was how the gyrojet pistol was made, one of the most unconventional guns ever. Although it had a slightly futuristic look to it, the gyrojet appeared to be just like any other pistol. However, it was anything but an ordinary gun. The MBA associates from California made the gyrojet an alternative to conventional pistols. Namely, instead of inert projectiles propelled by a gas explosion, the gyrojet fired rocket-propelled bullets. To cater for the type of rounds it used, the gyrojet had a unique firing mechanism. Six microjet rounds were fed into the chamber from the magazine inside the grip. A hammer would strike the rocket on the nose upon pulling the trigger, driving it back against the firing pin. Once ignited, the rocket would blast through the barrel with angled vents. The purpose of these vents was to release the blast pressure and spin the rocket. Because there was no gas pressure within the barrel and chamber, the system allowed for a lighter construction and produced almost no recoil. So what were the features that made the gyrojet such a poor gun? Firstly, the rounds were too expensive to produce. Considering the fact that MBA tried to sell the pistol to the army, the government would have been forced to spend a fortune on ammunition if the soldiers carrying the gyrojets were engaged in long-term conflicts. Moreover, apart from the high maintenance cost, the pistol showed poor accuracy and a significant fall-off in velocity once the rocket was burned out. All in all, the gyrojet was an interesting concept, but completely impractical. It appeared on the market in 1965, but the American Armed Forces never accepted it for service. Nambu 94 to be accepted into service in the armed forces, a gun usually has to meet a certain criteria for quality and performance requirements. Occasionally, batches of poor quality firearms found their way to frontline combat units. However, there haven't been many cases that an entire army was equipped with a faulty gun. That was the case with the Imperial Japanese Army in World War II and the infamous Nambu Type 94 pistol. It first appeared in 1934 as a replacement for the older Nambu Type 14 pistol. At the time, Japan had already begun its expansion into Asia, and the army required large quantities of sidearms, and they wanted it as soon as possible. The result was probably the worst pistol ever made in the history of firearms. From the offset, the Nambu 94 was a poorly designed pistol of extremely low quality. Once the Japanese war industry became overstretched, its quality reduced to the level of a handicraft. 
In addition, the pistol had awful ballistic performance. Because of the lack of balance between the short barrel and the power of the round, the Nambu 94 was only effective at close range. However, the real problem was that the pistol was extremely unreliable and a real threat to the welfare of its user. The Nambu 94 mechanism was designed in such a manner that it allowed an accidental misfire of the round before it was fed into the chamber. Another threat was the lever mounted on the outer left side of the pistol. The lever connected the trigger with the firing pin, and if pressed against something hard while the mechanism was cocked, the pistol would fire. Obviously, the pistol posed more of a threat to those who used it than to the target on the other side of the barrel. There were stories of the gun being nicknamed the Suicide Special or the Surrender Pistol, as it was reckoned that if a Japanese soldier was surrendering as he was handing the gun over on its side, he could press the sear and therefore fire off one last round. This was probably a myth, because if a Japanese soldier was actually going through the pretext of surrendering, he would have something worthwhile on his person like a hand grenade to detonate to try to kill as many of the enemy as he could, as well as himself. Despite all the drawbacks and poor quality, the Imperial Japanese Army kept using the pistol until the end of the war. Around 70,000 copies were made until 1945, with the manufacturing quality decreasing each year. The Japanese carried on using the Nambu 94 because their industry had neither the time nor the resources to produce anything else. Italian Infantry Weapons World War II The distinctive feature of the Italian army in World War II was its poor and insufficient armament. Even though weapons produced at the famous Italian arms factory Beretta were of the highest quality, the rest were known for their very low quality and obsoleteness. Since the Italian industry of the 1930s was undermined by financial crisis and government bureaucracy, the production of weapons did not meet Mussolini's imperial aspirations. Pistols Glacenti M1910 The Glacenti M1910 was a standard pistol of the Italian army in World War I, but remained in service until the end of World War II. It fired a unique 9x19mm Glacenti round. It was quite unpopular in the army as it was considered a second-rate pistol. However, since the army was in desperate need for pistols, the Glacenti was issued to army reserves and carabinieri units. Beretta M1934 The Beretta M1934 was the most commonly used pistol in the Italian army during World War II. The pistol was made in two versions. The most common type was chambered for 9x17mm, corto, short rounds, and the less common version was the M1935, which fired 7.65x17mm rounds and was for the Air Force and Navy. The Beretta M1934 was a blowback action, relatively small, very light, but had less power than most service pistols of the war. Because of its good quality, the Germans continued the production of the M1934 when they took over the Beretta factories in 1943. Rifles Carcano M1891 As with all other armies in the war, the Italians also used the old design single-shot rifles to arm infantry units. In their case, it was one of the most outdated service rifles, the Carcano M1891. Since it was introduced in 1891, not much had changed about the rifle until the Second World War. Its main features were a modified Mauser design bolt and Mannlicher magazine holding six rounds. The magazine was loaded via loading a clip that couldn't be ejected until the last round was fired. The Carcanos fired old 6.5 by 52 millimeter rounds. With a round nose bullet, they were obsolete even during the First World War. During the Ethiopian campaign of 1935 through 37, Italian commanders realized all the weaknesses of the round, so they decided to introduce a new, quite unusual 7.35 by 51 mm round. Rifles manufactured or modified to fire the new round were designated as M1891-38. However, in 1940, it was realized that the Italian industry was not capable of producing large quantities of new rounds, so the Italians decided to switch back to the old 6.5mm rounds and production of the 6.5mm chambered rifles. During the war, the Italians used several different versions of the Carcano rifle with two different calibers. 
submachine guns. Beretta M1938 Thanks to the engineers at the Beretta factory, the Italians had one of the best submachine guns of World War II. The Beretta M1938 submachine gun resembled many contemporary submachine guns, but it was its quality of materials and finishing that made it special. The weapon consisted of a long polished wooden stock with a steel tubular body and long barrel protected by a perforated jacket. The first variant, the M1938A, had four slots cut into the muzzle compensator. All parts were made from machine steel which added to the overall quality. The Beretta M1938 fired a standard 9x19mm parabellum round. There were several sizes of magazines holding 10, 20, 30, or 40 rounds. The trademark of the Beretta M1938, as well as all other Beretta submachine guns, was the double trigger system. The rear trigger was used to fire full auto, and the one in front for semi-auto fire. With quality parts and a well-balanced mechanism, the M1938 was known as a weapon that rarely jammed and was therefore very popular among soldiers. It was also considered as a valuable war trophy. As the war took its toll on the Italian weapons industry, the high production cost of the M1938 had to be reduced. This led to the Beretta M1938-42 and subsequent variants that followed. The wooden stock was shortened, its firing mechanism simplified, and its perforated barrel jacket was removed. The new machine gun still had the distinctive shape of the Beretta, but it was of far lower quality. However, it was also much cheaper, so it was produced in much larger quantities. Machine Guns Breda M1930 The weakest category of the Italian arsenal of small infantry weapons goes to its machine guns. The leader in machine gun production in Italy was the Breda Company, they began producing machine guns during World War I and continued to develop them after the war. One of their weapons was the Breda M1930 light machine gun. It was a weapon of quite awkward appearance and very poor quality with a number of flaws. One important drawback was that the weapon recoiled violently, as did the barrel. The rear and front sights were mounted to the body of the gun to compensate for this and had to be re-zeroed each time the barrel was changed. Another awkward solution was a fixed folding magazine that was fed with stripper clips containing 20 6.5 by 52 millimeter rounds. The problem with such a magazine was that if it was broken, the entire weapon couldn't be used. The biggest fault, however, was also connected to its rounds. Empty round cases were prone to jam inside the breech during firing. In order to limit this problem, the manufacturers provided the Breda M1930 with a small oil reservoir for greasing rounds before loading. The problem was that it made the entire mechanism too greasy, so it picked up a lot of debris and dirt. This drawback was especially obvious in Africa, where sand regularly stuck to oily parts, causing frequent jams. Being the only light machine gun in the Italian army, M1930s were deployed to every infantry squad. Due to its numerous drawbacks, it was the most unpopular weapon among Italian soldiers, and as soon as the war ended, it was withdrawn from service. The Fiat Ravelli M1914-35 This machine gun was a modified version of the Ravelli M1914. Even though the weapon earned a bad reputation during the First World War, the Italians had a narrow choice of machine guns in the 1930s. M1914s were taken out of warehouses and were modified by replacing water-cooled with air-cooled barrels and by introducing the new, more powerful 8x59mm round. The 10 round strip feed box magazine was updated to a belt feed. Even though engineers did their best to evade potential problems, the Fiat M1914-35 was no better than its predecessor. It had a low rate of fire and it also had problems with oil and dirt and was prone to malfunctions. Despite all its drawbacks, it was still produced in great numbers and used until the end of the war. Breda M1937 the Breda M1937 was the best Italian machine gun of the Second World War, but it was still far from competing with other machine guns of the time. Unlike the two other machine guns, the M1937 was a gas-operated weapon and was therefore reliable in action. It also had problems with case extraction, but it was not as serious as the M1930 and M1914-35. A distinctive feature of the Breda M1937 was that it was fed by tin tray cassettes or strips. 
The interesting thing about these trays was that after each round was shot, the gun's mechanism reinserted the empty case back into the tray. The reason behind this was so that the cases could be recycled at factories. While economical, this design feature could slow down the gunner's assistant when reusing these trays in the heat of battle. Another drawback of the system was that the trays only held 20 rounds, which meant that machine gun crews had to reload the weapon after each short burst. Hand Grenades During World War II, Italian soldiers used three hand grenade models, all carrying the same designation, Modelo 35. Even though they had the same principle of operation, they were different in design and complexity of mechanism. The simplest and the smallest was the OTO Modelo 35. It was loaded with 36 grams of TNT and a lead ball filled with shrapnel. A more sophisticated and powerful design was the Breda Modelo 35. It was loaded with 63 grams of TNT and was larger. The SRCM Modelo 35 had the most complicated mechanism. It had a charge of 43 grams of TNT, which was wrapped with wire that dispersed into shrapnel after the explosion. The Modelo 35 hand grenades were offensive grenades and had an explosive radius of 10 to 15 meters. They were also distinctive for their red color, which was the Italian official color code for the explosive. The interesting feature of all three models was that they had an impact fuse, unlike standard hand grenades of World War II that had a timed chemical fuse. This meant that the Italian bombs were designed to explode immediately on impact. With a double safety system, Modelo 35 grenades were very reliable, but misfires happened from time to time. In such occasions, they were still a threat since they were prone to detonate once they were picked up. It was because of this nasty habit that British soldiers in North Africa nicknamed them Red Devils. What's your favorite Italian infantry weapon of World War II? Leave a comment below. The FP-45 Liberator During World War II, the Allies made a lot of effort to support resistance fighters in occupied countries by delivering them all kinds of weapons and materials in order to set Europe ablaze. One of the most curious weapons made for such a purpose was the FP-45 Liberator Pistol. The idea behind creating such a weapon was to arm potential insurgents in occupied Europe with stealth pistols that they could use against enemy soldiers, hence the name Liberator. It was intended for hundreds of thousands of these pistols to be dropped into Europe so German soldiers would be looking over their shoulder knowing that anyone could carry a small concealable weapon. The pistol dimensions were minimal with an overall length of 5.55 inches or 141 millimeters and weighed only one pound or 0.45 kilograms, so it easily could be concealed in a pocket. Its intended purpose was for the resistance member to assassinate the enemy at close range, after which they would take his better suited weapon. The proximity of the target was of great importance as the pistol barrel was smooth bore, so it did not allow shooting distances farther than 26 feet or eight meters. In real conditions, the effective range was actually no more than 13 feet or four meters. The ammunition used for the FP-45 Liberator was the powerful 45 ACP, the same one used by the Colt M1911 pistol. At short distances, this round was quite effective regardless of the smooth barrel. The US government had big plans for the FP-45 Liberator, so one million of them were made. This job was given to the GMC Guide Lamp Factory in Anderson, Indiana. In order to cover up the real purpose of the weapon, it was designated as the Flare Projector Caliber 45. The production of the pistol was quite simple and cheap. In just 11 weeks, until August 1942, 300 workers made 1 million pistols. The Liberator consisted of only 23 steel parts, and the production price per pistol was cheap at $2.40, giving it the nickname of the Woolworth Pistol. Liberators were delivered in card boxes along with 10 45 caliber rounds, a wooden dowel, and a comic book-like instruction manual. It was a single-shot pistol, and in order to use it, the user removed a round from the housing inside the hand grip and inserted it manually into the breech. Reloading was more complicated, as the user had to unlock the breech and poke out the empty case with the help of the wooden dowel. Despite big plans, Liberators were never used on the scale that they were planned for. Only a small portion of the entire production run reached resistance fighters in Europe and the Pacific, 
and there is no written evidence of anyone using it with success. After the war, most were either thrown into the sea or melted down. Shosha like machine gun. The First World War. The Shosha or Fusée Metroyer Model 1915 CSRG was the standard machine rifle or light machine gun of the French Army during World War I. Designed in 1907, this light machine gun weighed around 9 kilograms or 20 pounds and fired the 8mm LaBelle cartridge at the slow rate of 250 rounds per minute. With around 262,000 Shosha machine rifles manufactured between 1915 and 1918, the weapon was the most widely manufactured automatic weapon of World War I. The American Expeditionary Force also used the Shosha, while they waited for the delivery of the new Browning M1917 machine gun, modified to fire 30-06 ammunition. In the muddy trenches, the machine gun was unreliable. Dirt could enter the gun's open-sided half-moon magazine easily, which clogged the mechanism. Even when not clogged, there could be a failure in feeding rounds. To avoid this, gunners loaded their magazines with 18 or 19 rounds instead of the maximum 20. Also problematic was the gun's long recoil system, making the recoil violent. A loose bipod, sights that made the weapon shoot too low and to the right, and overheating from fully automatic fire all caused great stress for the gunner. For the AEF version of the Shosha, French manufacturers used incorrect chamber measurements resulting in even worse performance. Because of this, it was not uncommon for US soldiers to ditch the weapon altogether. The Shosha was therefore regarded as the worst machine gun of the First World War. And according to some experts, the worst machine gun ever fielded in the history of warfare.